Hello and welcome back uh, to our next section for the AP 3D design uh, portfolio submissions. Uh, this second of our videos is going to cover uh, continue, continuing your sustained investigation from home. So again, we're in uh, a, a difficult position here, right? For a lot of you, uh, you're no longer in the classroom. You've done a lot of work with your specific idea and inquiry. You've used some very specific tools and materials. And now for many of you, you may have lost access to those. So we're gonna talk about some options that you may have moving forward to continue with your sustained investigation uh, and get your best portfolio to submit. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at what uh, that looks like. So once again, welcome back to AP 3D Art and Design. Uh, for those of you who may not have seen the last video, my name is Marty Loftus. I teach at Denver School of the Arts in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I've been teaching for 24 years. I've been teaching AP for many years. I've been a reader and a table leader um, and love three-dimensional design. So again, for this video, we're gonna be looking at how to continue your portfolio at home. Here is our lesson overview. So in this lesson, you will learn how to continue to work on your sustained investigation from home, again, with potentially different materials and limited space. We're gonna talk a little bit about options for different digital and analog modeling tools. We'll do a quick review of the core skills that directly relate to problem solving, decision making, and revision. We'll talk about some best practices to show the development of a sustained investigation, again, with only 10 images. And at the conclusion of this lesson, you really should be able to identify the changes made to the upload requirements, how your work will be assessed by AP readers, and you should be able to develop ideas that will allow you to work from home that could represent an evolution of your inquiry that maintain, maintains visual and contextual continuity. So what you need to know, as we covered in the last video, uh, College Board has tried to make this much more accessible for students with the knowledge that, again, we aren't working from schools in a lot of cases now. Um, we don't have that same amount of time, uh, space, materials, um, so they've extended that due date uh, for AP upload to May 26th. Additionally, the selected work section is uh, three works now that you're going to be uploading instead of five. Remember, three works, but six photographs. So two images for each of the works that you're going to be submitting. And your sustained investigation is now 10 images instead of 15. Again, everything in the 3D portfolio, and in fact, now everything in all of the portfolios will be submitted digitally this year. So once again, if we take a look at the AP uh, course skills, um, they're all right here. This is available on the website as well. And we're really looking at all of those skills across the board as you continue to work towards submitting your AP portfolio. Once again, we're gonna focus a little bit on what we've done in the past and things that you can do moving forward as you work towards your submission. So again, what I would like to do is go back to AP Classroom so we can just take a look at what things look like from that side. So if we go once again back to the AP website, you may start uh, at, once again, apcentral.collegeboard.org. This gives you access to all of the AP information and all courses. If you click up here at AP Courses and Exams to Course and Exam Pages, right here towards the top of the screen, you can click on AP 3D Art and Design. And this is going to lead you to the AP 3D Art and Design page. So once again, if you have not signed into AP Classroom, uh, please make sure that you're communicating with your administrator or your teacher to get in there as soon as possible. This is where you'll be able to enter your username and password and see the entire pages where you're actually going to upload photographs, information, written statements, etc. Once you've begun to do that, it's a little bit like working with a jigsaw puzzle. You can move pieces around, you can see what works where uh, in best places. Uh, and what works with your written commentary. So 
Again, if you have not begun that process yet, please make sure that you do that as soon as possible. Uh, this is gonna make your job moving forward much, much easier. Again, the other place that I would have you look is under the AP portfolio section here. If you click, this is gonna lead you to a lot more information, including resources and examples of student portfolios. We're gonna look at a lot of those portfolios in the next video where we start to demystify the inquiry product uh, process of your AP portfolio. So we're gonna come back to that in a later video. Um, for right now, let's come back to what we were looking at with our PowerPoint. So let's see here. This is new territory for all of us, uh, including me using some of the software to do these videos. So I appreciate your patience as we move forward. So for your sustained investigation, remember, you're no longer submitting 15 images, you're now submitting 10. This should uh, represent a sustained investigation through practice experimentation and revision, uh, a sustained investigation through materials, processes, and ideas, synthesis of those materials, processes, and ideas, and skill with 3D uh, design. <clears throat> we looked a little bit at the scoring rubric in our last video. We're just gonna circle back to that quickly once again. Remember, your four characters uh, that you're gonna be looking at for your, uh, for your grading, for your scoring on this are inquiry, practice, experimentation, and revision. And what I really wanna look at here is for this part, the idea of practice, experimentation, or revision. And notice that that idea of experimentation over and over again is so important. And I think this is something that we all probably need to embrace as the way that our sustained investigations are created and looked at moving forward, transition from what maybe you were doing at school or in your classroom to what students are going to be doing at, at home. So once again, that idea of experimentation, of risk-taking, of innovation, these are rubric points that now we have an opportunity to truly explore that we're in this position. Necessity truly is the mother of invention. Again, you may not have these tools, but in some ways, this is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to think creatively. How can you create similar works uh, that you've been working on all year with resources that may have drastically changed, working from your kitchen table or your bedroom instead of in a classroom environment or in a studio. So again, I think the best way for me to convey this to you is to think about this as an opportunity for invention, for creativity, for creative problem solving. Again, that can be rewarded greatly uh, when you think about this uh, in context of your AP portfolio submission. So much really is uh, developed around the idea of creating visual relationships among these materials, processes, and ideas. And that's even if the materials are different and they may be very different. That doesn't mean necessarily that you can't create these strong relationships. Uh, additionally, what I'll mention is that advanced 3D skills can be demonstrated with the most sophisticated or the most rudimentary of materials. It's not always about the material, but the skill using the material as a vehicle for really excellent design. So if we look at this next slide, this was an AP uh, piece that was uh, in the national exhibition from a few years ago. Um, this student had access to stone, really, really beautifully carved, um, excellent work. Uh, to be submitted in a sustained investigation or as a selected work. This next piece um, has some similar qualities and looks like stone, but this work was done completely and totally out of styrofoam. So this student had taken old pieces of styrofoam, carved them, and then spray painted them with a stone textured spray paint. Certainly not as sophisticated as working with something like marble. And yet the design qualities that you see in here, the investigation of positive and negative space and balance, design, texture, they're all evident and really demonstrates exceptional 3D design, again, even with less sophisticated materials. You know, each year we do see students who have access to, say, welding equipment, 
again, this is beautiful, sophisticated materials, processes, and design, but there aren't going to be many of us who have access to those things outside of the classroom. This work was done with recycled plastic drinking straws, straws as well as metallic spray paint. Again, two very, very different types of materials, perhaps one more sophisticated than the other. But the design qualities in both of these images represent excellent design choices and sophisticated design. One of my current students is working with uh, modeling clay. Uh, many of you probably have been working with this as well. <coughs> if we work, look at works like this and this, there are strong parts of this student's sustained investigation. But I don't think this student has access to a lot of Scopey clay, for example, at home. And it's a material that can be relatively expensive. So for those of you who might be doing design from home and don't have access to those materials, let's look at a couple of options. I'm going to share with you some things that you might be able to find online and use as free resources for a limited amount of time or even for an extended amount of time. So let's take a look at what those look like as well. Google SketchUp is a free design uh, a piece of software that you can download for uh, PC or Mac. Um, and it's available to you right now. Um, this is a little bit more linear. So for those of you who might be working in that regard, uh, this is a really, really good um, example of something that can be used if you're working in the realm of architecture as an example. Um, I can highly recommend this piece of software. And there are lots and lots of tutorials <coughs> online um, from different artists around the world who have used Google SketchUp to create some very, very sophisticated designs. The other piece of software that we're going to look at next is called Rhino. Uh, this is, again, uh, a piece of software that for right now, they're offering um, a free trial for teachers and students. Um, you can download, once again, this for PC or Mac. Um, this is going to take a little bit longer to learn. Uh, but again, it's all about that process, which is so important. Um, and this can give you a great idea of what that uh, looks like. The next one is called Sculptress. Sculptress is once again a free uh, software download. This is the stripped down version of ZBrush, but you can create some incredibly uh, intricate works from Sculptress that are more organic uh, than some of the other uh, pieces of software that we just shared. So if you download a work like Sculptress, which I have on my computer, and I'll share that with you as well. It looks a little bit like this. So once you've downloaded it, you're really looking at a virtual ball of clay. And I can take that and I can move it and I can spin it. And then all of your tools are over here along the left hand side. It allows you to click, pull, drag, and so you really have, again, this virtual ball of clay that can be used to create some very sophisticated ideas and designs. If you're working with something more like modeling clay, ceramic clay, hand building, uh, this can be a way to do that virtually if you don't have access to some of those materials that you did in the classroom. So if I go back to our PowerPoint and we look at the student who we had checked out earlier, and again, he's been doing some clay work for most of the semester. He started doing some work with Sculptress. And you'll notice that although you're doing, dealing with two very different pieces um, and approaches to creating these models, if we look at the way that these look together, and if we look at you know, this piece that he has done digitally in Sculptress, and what he had done originally with hand building, we can see those visual connections. And that really is what it's all about. And he's come up with a creative, innovative way uh, in terms of problem solving to continue working with something that has that visual continuity as well as contextual. So again, it's just the idea of some creative problem solving, knowing that you might not have those materials that you normally have in the classroom. We took a look at this as a process image in the last video that we looked at. <coughs> again, 
many of you may not have access to um, digital equipment. College Board is working to help out those students who need access to those things. But it's very easy to work two-dimensionally to develop and show three-dimensional ideas as well. In a piece like this, the student is given careful consideration to 3D design qualities and elements as process, thinking that she's going to be working with three-dimensional tools in the future. Especially if you're talking um, and writing about your experiences uh, post school closures, how you've been working two dimensionally to develop three dimensional ideas, again, that type of problem solving can work out very well. Paper is not only a two dimensional surface and uh, available for two dimensional design. You might want to think about paper as something that you can create three dimensional works with as well. I've had students use paper in a number of different ways to do much more advanced work three-dimensionally. I'm thinking about that again as a sculptural tool as opposed to just something that is going to be used to create two-dimensional designs. The way that we approach something like this is to think about even uh, simple elements of origami. If you were to repeat a pattern, think about those kind of like uh, Legos or building blocks. Can you piece these things together to create something larger and more sophisticated using something just as simple as paper. Can your ideas support what you're using for your materials again? When we talk about synthesis, we do think about what those materials and what those relationships look like with the type of theme or idea or inquiry that you're creating. A few years ago, this student created her entire sustained investigation around the idea of the death of the written word as we were moving more towards the idea of Kindles, eBooks, and uh, digital media. So the synthesis, again, between a very simple material and the idea and the conveyance of that idea, those uh, work so well together with something like this. And again, with a material that's completely and totally recycled. I know that she didn't pay for any of these. She just worked with recycled materials to create these ideas. And again, even with that, the synthesis of that idea of that death of the printed word, um, I think really worked nicely together. You may even want to think about using paper to create uh, maquettes. This was one that was done by a student just a couple of years ago that was also featured in the AP National Exhibition. It's very difficult to create large-scale architecture, and we don't all have access to software that allows us to do that. But this student used simple materials like paper, glue sticks, and pieced these things together on a small scale to represent something that would be a large-scale architectural piece. We can easily look at these works and think about what it might be like to walk inside of them. Although these are small and might fit on a table or a desktop, we can absolutely see these as large scale works and the design elements and principles in each one of these really represent excellence on the part of the student. From a portfolio a few years ago as well, um, these were all made out of just styrofoam cups. So again, uh, an extremely simple uh, economical material that many of us might have at home or have access to. But as we look at this material very simply cut and very carefully constructed into these different types of three-dimensional sculptures, this represents a very simple material, a relatively small piece, but really, really sophisticated 3D design elements. So even if you are working with something different before, if you can create this visual connection and this visual continuity between your works, that can really create some beautiful, beautiful structures. So a lot of the three-dimensional work that we see at the readings uh, is done with ceramics. We see a lot of ceramic work. Um, undoubtedly, uh, a lot of you have been working with that media as well. So again, we need to start coming up with some creative solutions as many of you don't have access to ceramic clay, potter's wheels, kilns, et cetera, at home. So, what does that look like? And to a large degree, this is gonna take some research. I wasn't sure what was out there as well, so what did I do? I inquired, right? So much of this is about inquiry. 
So there are some tools out there that might be kind of interesting for you to check out. Uh, this is uh, an app that's available for uh, uh, both Apple and Android phones as well as tablets. But this is called um, uh, Let's Create Pottery. It allows you to virtually create images and pieces of pottery that you can create, glaze, create textures and ideas. And once again, can be a really innovative way to problem solve moving from something analog into something that's more digital. The other couple of things that we see a lot of with a 3D portfolio are students who are working either in the realm of jewelry or of fashion. So we see some absolutely stunning, beautiful work that's done with, again, sophisticated materials. Um, these were done by students uh, and submitted for the AP portfolio over the last few years. Really, really beautiful work. We probably won't have an opportunity to do a lot of metal smithing at home either. So how do we address that? How can we problem solve? How can we come up with, again, some innovative, creative solutions where we continue the idea of wearable work, but using more rudimentary materials? So I'm going to show a few student pieces um, that my students have done over the course of the last two years using less sophisticated materials. A lot of classrooms might not have materials uh, that measure up to those uh, levels of sophistication either. That doesn't mean that you can't create really uh, phenomenal evocative pieces uh, like this bracelet and earrings that were done by a student using some simple tools um, and some simple materials that she found at home and at Home Depot. This was a necklace as well as earrings that were made completely and totally out of cotton swabs. She simply had a large thing of cotton swabs at home. She did most of this with the scissors and a hot glue gun. But again, although the materials are relatively simple, pay close attention to the design elements and how this would actually fit on a person's body and accentuate the human form. Again, these materials are nowhere near as sophisticated as the first images that we looked at, but this is still very well executed uh, three-dimensional design work. <laughs> this was actually a ninth grade student from a few years ago who did this from a porcupine uh, that she had found on the side of the road. Uh, I'm not suggesting that any of you do that, but this was some very creative, innovative problem solving on her part. Uh, to create the series of rings, earrings, and necklaces. Um, incidentally, this also won a National Scholastic Award. Some of you might have been working uh, in the realm of fashion. Um, as we get out of those studios that we had at school, again, we may not have access to the same amounts of um, materials processes. So sewing machines might not be something that we can use anymore. We might not have that wealth of fabric that we might have had at school. This is exceptional design work uh, three-dimensionally, and this is part of the AP website as well. But you have some other options. This dress was made completely and totally out of plastic uh, grocery bags that were upcycled to, up, uh, to create, again, what I would define as excellent three-dimensional design. The design, the process, the materials all pushed together to create something that truly works well. Another piece that's done out of styrofoam cups, a simple economical material that can be recycled or are created from uh, materials where you are upcycling those to create design works that are very sophisticated, even if the materials don't measure up to that same level of sophistication. This dress was made entirely out of essays and notes that the student, student had taken uh, during her AP US history exam course. So again, some really innovative, creative ideas that you might be able to push towards now that we don't have that same wealth of materials um, and studio spaces that we did uh, when we were in our classroom. So a little bit of a debrief and summary here. Um, once again, please make sure that you can log into your AP Classroom account. Uh, you won't really get a great sense <clears throat> of where you are and where you're going and what you need to accomplish until you can take a look at that jigsaw puzzle 
um, all pieced together as one. So make sure you can log in. Um, don't wait to the last minute. It's important to put in those things sooner rather than later, knowing we there, that we are less than two months away from our actual submission. Take some time to do some creative problem solving. What have you done so far? What materials can I use from home that could represent an evolution of my inquiry that man maintains visual and contextual continuity? Again, I really think that this is more of an opportunity to show off some of your creative thinking skills and problem solving. Um, so really think about it like that. How can you have your sustained investigation evolve as you may have to make some changes? Again, there are obstacles that come with working remotely, but again, these are opportunities. The next video that we're gonna be uh, talking about is gonna be demystifying inquiry. So for many of you who may have taken a 3D art and design course or a drawing course or 2D design course, um, the way that we've designed this curriculum has changed and inquiry is a huge part of that. So we'll be talking a little bit about what inquiry really means and looking at some examples of what students have submitted, um, how they've used inquiry and talk about uh, some very high scoring pieces, some medium scoring pieces and some lower scoring pieces and why they achieved those scores. Uh, I think that's probably our best way to really understanding uh, what it means to do an inquiry and how you can best attack that uh, as you continue moving along uh, with your sustained investigation uh, in your AP portfolio. So once again, uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Um, and, and this is for a lot of uh, students um, that we know may not have access to the internet or a device. So most of you watching might have access. If you know anyone who doesn't, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, we're working to uh, get students what they need in terms of mobile tools and connectivity. Um, you can reach College Board at cb.org slash tech, um, and we're gonna do our best to make sure that all of our students have access to the materials, the devices, and the information that they need to move forward inside of all of their AP portfolio exams, uh, and uh, again, AP art and design portfolios. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, let us know if you have uh, issues with technology. I'm very hopeful that this gives you a little bit of help and guidance as you continue to move forward with your AP portfolio and very best of luck. Thank you and we'll see you next time.